Hello Internet and welcome to my channel and it's been a while since I last uploaded a video because I've been feeling pretty freaking uninspired and I don't know if it's burnout or I don't know what it is but I just really didn't have what it took to actually you know start working make videos or anything at all and I'm starting to think that I'm gonna have to change that or otherwise I'm gonna just you know be here dangling around doing actually literally nothing with myself. So, as usual, I decided to just pick something up and start it with it. I don't know what I was doing and I really had no idea how I was gonna even complete it, but I picked this image called Hill of Crosses. It randomly came to me when I was scrolling through Instagram, doom scrolling my life away. And then I went to Pinterest to get some references, but I got instantly distracted. However, I did pack myself up again and I decided to open up Blender and just start modeling. Looking at the empty scene, I was pretty freaking overwhelmed thinking what I was supposed to do. But then I thought, well, this happened before, so I just started with, you know, making a single object, which was the cross on the Hill of Crosses, which I think is pretty important because it is called the Hill of Crosses. Gathering some textures, I went to Photoshop to pack them up because, I don't know, I usually don't do it, but this time I thought, hey, a change of pace would be nice, so I decided to pack some textures, which I was gonna use as the base for the crosses, but that's the only thing I used the, this specific texture for. Other parts, I just didn't bother, but I did crunch them down to make them pixelated. After a quick UV mapping from view and, you know, making some duplicates of the same cross, I decided to add a plane which was going to be my base for the entire terrain. It's not going to be a big terrain, it's going to be a small scene and I'm going to be cutting every corner possible. So I subdivided it, triangulated it, turned on proportional editing and did some proportional editing to make it look a little bit like, you know, what you would expect to see outside now that I go outside so that I, don't, I wouldn't know but you would probably know that. After that I decided to add a camera to get a POV so that, you know, I get to know what I'm trying to do and adding a camera in your scene is pretty important so I would suggest you do that as quickly as possible after that was done I was starting to get a little lost so I decided to import in the image that was gonna be my reference point or my inspiration for this entire project so then after that I selected the crosses and made sure that their pivot point is at the very bottom because I wanted to make this thing easier for me so that I can scatter them around by turning on the magnet mode in blender blender is a bit picky so you will have to make sure that it works properly and you know all the pivot points are correctly so I decided to select one of them each of them individually I set up the 3d cursor to their bottom point and then I just manually you know went into object and you know marked the origins to the 3d cursor and that made things so much better because I could just you know place them around the map on my terrain and make sure that they you know don't look weird and they would stick to the ground instead of floating around which is a very common thing that happens when I'm whenever I'm trying to do something in blender because 3d scene working on 3d scene is pretty freaking trippy it's difficult. Well, anyways, doing that saved me a ton of time. After that, I was starting to look at some trees because no scene is complete without crispy looking pixelated 256 megapixels worth of... Wait, it's not megapixels, is it? It's called pixels. 256 pixels of trees in the scene. And honestly, you don't really have to work too hard to get these trees looking good. Just to add a good material, increase the roughness, lower the IRO. IRO and then add the tree texture make sure that you know you mark them as transparent textures otherwise they will be looking a little bit weird to do that go into the shading tab just mark the transparency alpha channel to the alpha channel and that should give you the trees after that you have to place these trees around on your terrain surprising i know after that you have to make sure that you don't end up placing too many trees because that will look pretty goofy and i'm starting to think this texture was not good because well it doesn't look that good and then i add it in a cylindrical cylinder cylindrical cylinder I decided to remove the top base and I wanted to use this for a panorama a panorama is gonna be a basically like an like you know one texture of a lot of trees in the background which is gonna be a lot of trees in the background right now I picked up a random panorama but it doesn't look that good I would change it like you know uh, further into the video but I was a little too distracted I didn't really know what I was doing I was just going with the flow and I feel like a lot of you are gonna do the same so don't worry just pick up your textures import them into blender place them around just get a feel of what you're trying to do the next thing i wanted to do is actual trees for this i looked up some tree textures i duplicated some of these planes to have this you know plus pattern and then i just imported and made a new texture and imported the tree texture make sure they're all transparent if they're not use some kind of ai transparency background website to just remove them it's pretty easy AI has basically you know made things really easy at the same time taking away all the creativity from the jobs actually you know what while they're at it you can actually ask AI to make this 
entire scene for you or you know make ask chat gpt to do it anyways after that i wanted to add some texture to the terrain and i decided to like you know select this obviously not made by me and completely coinc coincidental pattern into the pathway i added added two textures one for the pathway and the other for the grass i quickly did realize that this does not look that good so i decided to you know look for a better texture for the ground and i also looked uh, looked up a grass texture and then you know added them and then you know uv scaled them properly and now i for some reason my brain decided i was going to change the panorama so i got this really darn cool looking panorama texture and then imported that into my blender and replaced the old panorama texture because that looked really didn't look that good but panorama is a great way of adding like a bit of a distant foliage in your background this makes your scene look a lot better like it makes you feel like it has a lot of depth even though it doesn't and well look, would you look at that our scene is starting to look a little bit better after that i went into the same website look from some look for some textures of grass oh my god i'm starting to lose my mind with these pronunciations anyways i started to look for some textures for grasses and some of foliages so that you know my scene doesn't look as barren as the sahara desert and then i decided to add some hdri and hdri is a pretty cool way of saying you don't know how to light up a scene properly and that's why you need an environment texture Go into Polyheaven, look for a good HDRI texture, download a low resolution one, and then go into your world settings, change it to an environment texture, and go ahead and pop that HDRI in, like you don't know how to properly light your scene. It's totally fine, even professional people use it. This allows you to have pretty good looking lighting in your scene, but do keep in mind it varies depending on if you're using EV or cycles. And then, to fill the absence of using a proper sky, I decided to add a plane, removed its ability to receive any shadows, and then decided to, you know, get a sky image from the internet. Decided to use some shaders to, you know, manually tweak a little bit of its, uh, you know, image colors and stuff. You don't have to do that, I just did it on my own. And then, behold, we went into the compositing tab, which is the magic of everything. This is where we can add copious amount of bloom so that you can hide all your imperfections and make people think that it's actually pretty darn aesthetic. And yeah, just, you know, open a new window and go into the render view. Oh, make sure to enable the always compositing so that you can see all the mistakes and, you know, possibly bad choices you're making with your life. After you're done with the compositing, I decided to add some fog into the scene, which I later completely removed, but I did try. And you can also add it if you want, maybe a little bit of stylistic choice approach. Go ahead and add a volume scatter node, and then you're, you're, like, you're immediately gonna realize that doesn't have that much control. Then go ahead and add a principled volume, which again, I didn't use at all. I could have just stuck with the volume scatter, but I didn't. Then I added a color ramp to you know kind of like give this gradient effect and quickly realized that it's not giving the effect that I want. And and I decided to add a texture coordinate and a mapping node so that I can, you know, manually kind of like map the gradients around and like, you know, make it look a little bit prettier than it actually is. Also, this does look pretty good, but I decided to completely remove it on, you know, onwards with the tutorial because I thought it doesn't look that good. Okay, after that, I, you know, chose the tree textures and stuff and completely compressed them into 256 pixels, which I think is appropriate and you might want to have to do you know you're not really might you will have to do this for like every single texture make sure that you follow a continuity otherwise it's not gonna look good and the bloom is working pretty nicely so it's time for us to make the church and for the church again it's pretty simple i completely sped it up so that you don't have to watch me meticulously making this thing up like you know stuff it's just basic modeling and then i use this very good looking image of the church which was my reference and i just completely you know mapped everything onto the image i didn't even bother making a texture i just used uh, project from view and then you know completely did it because the church isn't our main focus point it's just serving as a background part the background prop okay so yeah uh make sure to cut corners because obviously when you're trying to make a scene you have to make it look good at the same time you can just you know find ways to cut corners and you know make your scene look a lot creative because I believe limitations inspire your creativity and if you don't have limitations it's not gonna look good another thing you have to go into this um, the render tab go down find the film tab and have to make sure while you're in cycles or EV both if you're in cycles you will get this black man Harris thing and then you just need to it's 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 same for the boat just need to make sure the filter of this thing is just set to 0.01 it doesn't go any lower than that setting it to higher values allows it to like you know kind of use some kind of anti-aliasing MSAA but just set it to as low as possible and that will give you the pixel perfect nearest neighbor thing so yeah anyways hope you enjoyed the tutorial see you again um, sorry if this was on completely rush I'm on 
and I'm on caffeine. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, uh, leave a like, leave a subscribe. Uh, there's a Patreon page down in the description if you want to support the channel. See ya.